You're watching Keystone Science, and in today's episode, we're going to be building a VU meter. Before we go into the video, let's go straight to the mail. So today's letter comes from Adam Thomas of Dillon, Colorado. And so here Adam says, good job with the live stream, thank you. And the letter is dated November 5th, 2017. I don't know why, but I've actually, uh, my mail didn't come in until just barely. So, I don't know where some of it was going. But I finally got the letter. Let's see. He says, are you going to show us your big Tesla coil? Ah, uh, here it is. Yep, whoops. There we go. I haven't shown it because, actually, if you look over here, you see that wire there? It, at some point, fell over and snapped that wire there. And so... I don't know. You can't start it back up is the problem when the wire is like that. But now if I were to start it back up, basically the high voltage would arc across that point and then it would just carbonize the wire and more and more of it would just continue to degrade and break. And so I kind of have to wind a new coil, which is something I started to do, as you can see here, with a lot thinner of wire. But then all the wire got tangled up at the top, so I had to cut it short and I haven't yet had time to go back and wind another one. But I would like to cut this and perhaps attach it back up to my old Tesla coil circuit and see what kind of sparks we can get off of that. So that's the essence of why I haven't showed my Tesla coil yet, is because it is broken. He would also like me to do more experiments with the microwave gun and more chemistry. I would also like to do more experiments with the microwave gun. Um, well, kind of. Not necessarily with the microwave gun, but I have been thinking about trying to make like an x-ray uh, imager, for instance, because I think it looks fun. However, I do know that uh, Applied Engineering, I believe, made a x-ray imager that had like a turntable and a phosphorescent screen so that you could basically get 360 x-ray images, which is extremely cool. And I wish I had one of those, because that sounds pretty darn amazing. Um, but besides that, uh, in different news of things kind of related to uh, emitting radiation types, I am going to do a video here pretty soon with Cody's lab building a uh, nuclear fusion reactor. He has the deuterium and the turbo molecular vacuum pump and I have made a high voltage power supply for it and then also I ordered a neutron tube. I had to like order it from Ukraine or something like that and it's like it says USSR on it so that's kind of funny. But basically that tube I turned into... I'll show you guys the video for it later because I'm going to make a video on how to make this device. It's a neutron counter basically and so if neutrons go up there and hit it, it's a way to detect the number of neutrons being emitted from the fusion so that we can determine its efficiency and get some data points, I guess. Yeah. Anyways, back to the letter. It would appear he sent us a beautiful picture. Let me unravel it here really quickly. As you can see, uh, here we have Albert Einstein and Nikola Tesla and Thomas Edison. All very cool people. This is a very nice picture. Thank you so, so much. Uh, yeah, I love it. I'm gonna go ahead and hang all these up on the mail wall back there, and so I'll be back with you guys in one moment. So in case you don't know what a VU meter is, basically it's an audio spectrum analyzer. Kind of in a way meaning that basically the higher, uh, louder volume going into something, it's going to display a higher output. The lower volumes will be able to turn on the bottom LEDs, then as it gets up and up and up, it'll turn on the higher LEDs. And so, to do that, we're going to use something called a comparator. A comparator is something that basically references an input voltage and an output voltage, and then says, okay, are they similar, and then outputs, basically. And to do that, we're going to have voltage dividers for each of the comparators, so that it'll be comparing different voltage values up to the uh, low voltages to high voltages to determine then turn on the output LEDs. And by turn on, I kind of more mean like it's going through this way, positive to negative, and the comparator provides the negative connection. Now the one that we're going to build today, to be honest, isn't going to be that great, just because it's supposed to be a simple one to kind of introduce you to the idea of comparators. So unlike some of my other videos where it's more of a learning a uh, physics property, this is more of just straight electrical engineering, so there's no really formulas to really show you guys, it's more of just moving straight into it. So, with that said, let's go ahead and look at the circuit that we're going to be using today. For this project, you're going to need 8 330 ohm resistors, 7 1000 ohm resistors, 2 20,000 ohm resistors, 1 33,000 ohm resistor, 
eight LEDs and two LM324s. Now if you don't know the pinout of an LM324, if you face the divot as the same oriented in this picture, you can see that the pins go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And you can see each part of the pins that connect up to the different comparators that form up this circuit. As this integrated circuit is practically just four comparators all built into one little uh, package. As you can see on the circuit, on each of the comparators, I have the matching pin put next to it. And so, for the first four comparators, that matches up to the first LM324, and the next four are going to match up to our second one. So, now that the general understanding of how the circuit works is complete, let's go ahead and move on to how to build it. In order to build out the circuit, I'm going to be using a breadboard like this one. Now, breadboards are very nice because it really helps with prototyping as you're able to quickly interchange parts if something doesn't work properly. And so, to begin off, I'm going to insert the two LM324s by just placing them in the middle. That way each of their pins are going to be connected to an independent row. Now given that we're building it off of these two parts, the circuit is extremely symmetric. And so, as I do each step, I'm going to be doing it to the top chip and to the bottom chip. And so I'm just going to be talking through what I'm doing to the top chip, but apply the exact same action to the bottom chip, until I tell you otherwise anyways. To start off, I'm going to connect up all seven of my 1000 ohm resistors. And so, for the first one, I'm going to place it from pin 3 to pin 5. And because of the symmetry I was talking about a moment ago, I'm going to insert another 1000 ohm resistor on the bottom chip from pin 3 to pin 5. Now I can insert another 1000 ohm resistor from pin 5 to pin 10. And finally another 1000 ohm resistor from pin 10 to pin 12. By this point we should have 6 1 kilo ohm resistors put into the circuit. And so the final thing we need to do is bridge these two. And so I'm going to put a 1 kilo ohm resistor onto pin 12 of the top half, and I'm going to insert that into pin 3 of the bottom half. Now we need a bus to connect up a bunch of pins to, and I'm going to be using this right side for my positive voltage and negative voltage, which means this left two rails are completely open, and so we're going to be using one of those. And so again, I'm going to show the actions performed onto this top chip, but really do it for both the top and the bottom chip, as they're symmetrical. So first I'm going to take a jumper wire from pin 2 going over to this negative rail, and then a wire from pin 6 to the negative rail, now a wire from pin 9 going over to pin 6, and finally a wire from pin 13 to pin 9. So in essence, what we've done with all these white wires is that we've created this bus going right here. And so you can see at the end we need this 20,000 ohm resistor. And so now we need to take a 20,000 ohm resistor from the left rail that we were just working with going over to the real negative rail. Now instead of putting a resistor across the entire board, I can instead just connect the 20,000 ohm resistor from the pin 13 of one of these going over to the negative rail. Now we need to place another 20,000 ohm resistor going from our negative rail to pin 12 of our bottom LM326. Now pin 11 of both the top and bottom LM326 needs to be wired over to the negative rail. Now as you can see on our circuit, the next thing we need to do is connect up this array of resistors and LEDs. And so, considering how jumbled up my board is already with resistors going everywhere, I'm going to take a lot of jumper wires and bring them down here from each of the pins. Now again, with these next steps I tell you, since this is a symmetric circuit, be sure you perform it on the top and bottom chip. And so, first we're going to take a wire from pin 1, and I'm just going to bring it down to an open rail down here. Now I can take a wire from pin 7 and bring it down to the row directly beneath that, and from pin 8 to the row beneath that, and from pin 14 to the row beneath that one. So now with this whole line of 8 different wires leading from all these different pins up here from the comparators, we're going to go ahead and connect the adjacent rows between them with a 330 ohm resistor for every single one of them. If you've done this, be sure to ensure that none of the metal leads from the resistors are touching each other, otherwise you'll short out part of the circuit. If you don't know the polarity of an LED, basically the long leg is positive, the short leg is negative. And if you look inside, the piece of the larger bit is going to be the negative side, while the piece of the shorter bit is going to be the positive side. And so, with the positive side connected to the positive rail, I can insert the negative side into the resistor row. And we're going to do that for 8 LEDs going down, colors of your choice. For me, I'm personally going to do 2 reds at the top, followed by 2 yellows, followed by 4 greens. Now we need to take a wire from both pin 4s of the LM326 and bring it over to the positive rail. Now we're going to be using this 50,000 ohm potentiometer. Now, as the circuit stands, we only actually need 2 of these pins, and so bend up one of the end pins, and we should be good. Now we need to connect this potentiometer from pin 3 to the positive rail, but since this board is getting pretty full of wires, I don't want to put it directly up to pin 3. And so I'm going to take a jumper wire, and bring it over to this row right here. Then I'm going to connect the potentiometer here in parallel between that and this row. And then I'm going to take one final wire, and bring it from that row, going over to the positive rail. So the very last thing we need to do is provide an audio input for this. And so for the audio input, I'm going to be using this mono headphone jack. 
I'm going to connect up one side of it to the positive voltage rail, while the other side I'm going to put on this open row I have at the very bottom of the board down here. And then from that row I'm going to connect up my 33,000 ohm resistor going over to that negative bus that we created earlier. And with that last step done our circuit is finally complete. Now I have connected up the positive wire to the positive rail and a negative wire going to the negative rail. And I have it set to around 3 volts which is about the voltage drop of the LEDs or just below it since we want a good reference between them. Now I can go ahead and hit play on my phone and sadly you guys can't hear the audio because it only outputs through this jack. And you can see that the LEDs are lighting further up the chain with the louder the music gets. Now I haven't gotten it to reach the red yet so let's go ahead and tune this and see if we can get it to reach the red. There we go, it's getting up towards the red. The problem is uh, you have to find just the right spot for this tuning. Otherwise, it doesn't show it that well. Let's see. See, if I tune it up there, then all the volume input is already maxing it all out, so you can see it lighting up all the LEDs. I was recently contacted by JLC PCB offering to print some of my circuits on circuit boards for me. And so, as it turns out, they can actually print your circuit boards for $2, which is extremely nice, because it's honestly kind of fun. As you can see, this is the circuit that we just built all put out onto the PCB. I have all the LEDs going down through here, I have the resistors over here, resistors over here, and these two ICs are for the LM324s. Now when I was designing this, I made it so that they were SMD ones, just because they take up less space. Not really that it was really important to do that, I just thought it would be fun. And because I need to get better at my SMD soldering skills, so yeah. So I think this is a very good deal that you guys should definitely be aware of, as it's an extremely cheap deal to print the circuit boards, and it gives kind of a sense of pride in all honesty, and they're not that hard to design. I can make a video on designing circuit boards, basically to design the Gerber files and stuff required for them. There's a lot of free software online that can help you through it. It's extremely easy, and honestly pretty fun. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and build out this whole uh, jumbled mess of wires onto one of these, which should be a lot easier because it's pretty much just putting down the components. And so, I'll be right back with you guys when I do that. And so, here's the entire circuit all soldered onto the board. Now, admittedly, as you can see, I did make the spots for the resistors a bit too big. I made them so that they would practically be a half watt resistor, I believe. But really, these are all fourth watt resistors and there's no need for them to be that big. But that's not at all a problem for the effectability of the circuit. Besides that, you can see I put the potentiometer down here, with the LEDs going up, with greens at the bottom, then whites, then reds. Now with it all connected up and with slightly more powerful audio input, you can see the full spectrum of the LEDs. So you guys should definitely go check them out, I'll have their link first thing in the description below. I myself am going to get some things printed just because I think it looks very nice, and so I'm going to want to get some of my older circuits put onto PCB boards. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. I'm going to output videos once every week now once again, because I've gotten more things figured out and now it is manageable. If you guys have any physics topics or any experiments that you would like to see me do, then go ahead and let me know in the description box below. Uh, but besides that, that just about wraps up this video, so please remember to be safe and have a wonderful day. You're watching Keystone Science, and in today's episode we're going to show you how to make your very own solar panel.